Today I want to show you three things. Number one, I want to show you a problem. And arguably this is one of the biggest problems our world faces right now. In fact, I believe it is the number one thing that divides us. Number two, I want to show you what would happen if this problem didn't exist. Better still, I'll show you what happens right now to the people who are on the so-called right side of this division. And number three, I want to present you with a solution. Now before I get to number one, let me show you how I found out that this problem even existed in the first place. When I was nine years old, I traveled to East Africa for the very first time. In fact, it was nine years ago. And on that very first trip to East Africa, I learned so much. I spent time with young people my own age, and I realized that we shared far more similarities than differences. I played soccer with the kids, a game that I really loved, and so did they. And we connected really well, not because we were trying to, but simply because it came naturally. And it wasn't until after the game when I started speaking to the kids that I started to realize that there were some serious differences in the way we both lived our lives. Their schools were made out of cow dung, mud, and sticks. Mine was made from perfectly shaped brick and copious amounts of concrete. Their water was brown and was five kilometers away by walk. It was filled with waste from the donkeys that had relieved themselves there the days before. My water was purified, packaged, sold, and in my fridge. Their health care was non-existent. Mine was everywhere, and this didn't sit well with me. I wanted to do something about it, but I didn't know what to do at the time, so I went back home. I went back to Canada. I told my friends. I told my family about what I had seen, and they encouraged me to go back. And so I did. This time I was 12 years old. And this time I saw the opening of an all-girls secondary boarding school called Kisaruni built by the WE movement, or as many of you may know it, by its former name, Free the Children. And I saw 40 young girls enter high school for the very first time. It was so inspiring to see these girls enter. But even more than that, to see their parents, to see their parents know that their daughters would be the leaders of tomorrow, something they themselves would never even dream of. And I asked a simple question that day, one that I assumed I knew the answer to. Naturally, I was curious. As a young 8th grade student, where would I continue my education into secondary school? I was about to start in just a few weeks back home in Canada. But where would my friends go? Where would I go if I lived in Kenya? Is there a school for boys? No. There was no school for boys. Funnily enough, that matched the quality of education that the girls were receiving. And this really didn't sit well with me. This really didn't sit well with me because I played soccer with these people. These young people my own age three years ago, and now they didn't have a place to go to school, and I did. I felt responsible to act. And so I did. I went back home, and I founded Project Jenga. Jenga meaning to build in Swahili, and ultimately what I wanted to do was build an all-boys secondary school in rural Kenya so that I would have a place to go to school if I lived there. And after six years of hard work, we've raised nearly $1 million towards the school, and it will open in just two months, and 40 young boys will start high school for the very first time. And their parents will have the same reactions, knowing that their boys will now be the leaders of tomorrow. But to go back to that very first trip to Kenya I took when I was just nine years old, the one thing that differentiated me from my global peers can be simply summed up in just one word. Luck. The luck of where we were born. And so, enter number one. The problem, the one thing that differentiated us was luck, not to be confused with chance. Chance is what happens when you find a quarter on the street or a hat you thought you'd lost. Chance or luck is far more primitive, far more profound, consists of three ingredients. Health, safety, and access to opportunity. Health, safety, and access to opportunity. Three things that if we do not have, it becomes very difficult to pursue something more than survival. Think about it in your own life. When you're unhealthy, you think about getting better. When you're unsafe, you think about finding comfort or shelter. And when you don't have access to opportunity, you think about the one choice you do have, often a source of frustration for you, and sometimes even a source of frustration for the people around you. So what we need to do is come together to make luck history. We need to make luck history, make the desperation, make the hope that our kids are born into a place where they're lucky, a thing of the past. Make luck history. And by make luck history, I mean provide everyone with choices. Of course, there will be some level of inequality in our world. In fact, sometimes it's even celebrated at places like the Olympics. But the fact of the matter is, some people will capitalize on their luck, and other people won't. And so, enter number two. What happens when you are lucky and you capitalize on 
Good luck. I believe that the one thing we all want in this world, more than lots of money, a good family, a great job, is to be happy. Happiness. So allow me to take you on a journey from luck to happiness. It starts with luck. Three fundamental ingredients. Health, safety, and access to opportunity. And then when we have these three things, we are then presented with a whole bunch of different opportunities. Opportunities like the one you took when you came to a TED Talk today. You could have been out getting groceries, spending time with your family, paying a pickup game of soccer, but you chose to come to a TED Talk. And I thank you for that. But there are also grander opportunities. Grander opportunities like the one you choose your career with or the person you decide to spend your life committed to. So how do you know which opportunity is right for you? I hope I spelled that right. How do you know which grander opportunity is right for you? Well, Steve Jobs could have gone into medicine. Ralph Lauren could have literally tried polo. Taylor, Taylor Swift could have chosen not to shake it off. Okay, but these people chose something specific. Steve Jobs chose to go into technology. Ralph Lauren chose to become and go into fashion. Taylor Swift chose to become an entertainer and then shake it off. Why did that happen? The one thing that these three people have in common is that they found what they loved. And love is the next step along the progression from luck to happiness. Because when you truly love something, whether it be a job, an idea, an initiative, a person, then you want to spend your life committed to it, or at least a good part of it. And what you want to do when you commit yourself to something is you want to nurture it. You want to make it thrive. You want to make it better. And that's when you know you've found your true love. And when you do find your true love, then something truly magical emerges. Ambition. The ambition to make your love better. The ambition to make your love better. And it has to be natural, and it has to be selfless. And selfless is a very important word here, because if you're not selflessly connected towards making your love better, then you found a false opportunity. So ambition is the next step along the progression. Now, here's where the beauty comes in. When you are ambitious towards making your love better as a result of the opportunities you were given by way of your luck, then you are on a pursuit of purpose. See, I believe that the pursuit of happiness is wrong and misleading. If you're pursuing happiness, what do you expect it to be along the journey? Sad, angry, mad? But if you're pursuing purpose, you can be happy along the journey knowing that you're on a path to fulfillment. Of course, there will be moments of sadness, anger, frustration, madness, angst, whatever it may be. But the fact of the matter is, you are on a way to pursuing purpose, on your way to happiness. And that's all about pursuing purpose. But the fact of the matter is, not everyone can do that. Not everyone is lucky. Trouble is, right now, in our very moment, as we sit here today, we suffer from an epidemic of indifference. An epidemic of indifference. People are discriminating on the basis of luck. It's really, this is where ideas and decisions made before we were born are influencing the way that people look at us now. I mean, how ridiculous does that really sound? Decisions made before we were born are affecting the way that people look at us now. That's discrimination on the basis of luck, things like race and religion. That's discrimination on the basis of luck, part of our epidemic of indifference. So what can we do? How can we act? So, enter number three, the solution, the one thing that can cure our epidemic of indifference and make luck history is education. Education can and will make luck history, and let me tell you why. Education inspires the next generation of ambitious doctors, keeping us healthy. The next generation of ambitious change makers, keeping us safe, and provides us with an access to opportunity so that we can find the choices that we need in order to pursue our purpose, find what we really want to do in our lives, provide for our family, provide for ourselves, and get a good job to do just that, only through education. Now let me make one simple point of clarification. I believe that every single human being on our planet can be happy, lucky or not. I also believe that every single human being on our planet has a purpose, lucky 
or not. But what I also believe is that education can allow us to think about these things, happiness and purpose, and not if we have clean water at the end of the day to provide for our family. That's the power of education. That is the power of education, allowing us to think about these things, happiness and purpose, and not if we have clean water to provide for our family at the end of the day. Now, for all the skeptics in the room, all the naysayers, all the critics, allow me to introduce you to the first graduating class of Kisaruni. Kisaruni All-Girls Secondary School, the same class that I saw enter school for the very first time six years ago. They have all since graduated, every single one of them. They have all gone to university, and they are all in leadership positions at university. One student in particular, who I didn't know at the time, she received under 50% on her entrance exam to get into this school, but she was accepted in based on the need of her and her family. After four years of education at this outstanding school, she graduated, received an international scholarship, and now wants to go back to her community and do the same thing for her community members that education did for her. That is the power of education in transforming someone's life, otherwise unlucky, and transforming them into a lucky person in order for them to pursue their purpose. That is the power of education. Now, education has an amazing impact on the people that we're educating, but it also has an impact on everyone else, the people who are already lucky, if you will. I've had the chance to travel to some of the most vulnerable places in the world. One place that stands out is a small municipality in Brussels called Molenbeek. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's under six square kilometers, one of 19 municipalities in the international city center of Brussels. And the reason why some of you might be familiar with it is because it's been in the news as of late as it's inspired some of the radicalists in the attacks of Paris and Brussels in 2015. And thinking about this, how could this be? How could it be that a small municipality under six square kilometers could harbor such violence? Well, let's take a look at their education. According to the Washington Post, teachers in the area call the schools in Molenbeek concentration schools, say that they only accentuate the problem. Unemployment is higher here than any other place in the city. So what's happening is young people are finding a sense of brotherhood, a sense of kinship in radicalism. Because that's the only choice they have. They have no access to opportunity. So imagine what schools could do to a place like Molenbeek, in the international city center of Brussels. It could not only transform their lives, it could transform their community's lives, their country's lives, our lives. That's the power of education and transforming more than just one life. You see, choice empowers. Choice empowers you to pursue your purpose. But now you have a choice to make. Number one, you can choose to carry on with normal life. And number two, you can accept your responsibility and be a part of the solution. And the beauty of choice is that you all have it, as long as you are lucky and can tolerate your decision. But just like any problem, there is a solution. You just have to ask yourself whether or not you want to be a part of it. Project Jenga was the way that I have made luck history and continue to do so, continue to make luck history by providing secondary school education to those in rural Kenya who otherwise would not have it. And in just two months, when these young students enter the school for the first time, they will now be able to pursue their purpose. They will pursue their purpose thanks to education. And then they can make luck history in so many others' lives. That's the power of education in just one action. But there are other ways to make luck history. You just have to be willing to find them and open your eyes to seeing them. So teach, educate, learn, share your visions with the world. Be a part of the solution. Responsibility was the reason why I started Project Jenga. I felt responsible to help my global peers, our global peers. So from one lucky person to all of you, I can encourage you to act, and I thank you for acting already. Responsibility drives action. Responsibility drives action. You feel it? I know I do. Let's make luck history. Thank you very much.